Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be checking out an open source animation powerhouse. I'm actually kind of shocked I haven't covered it on this channel to this point in time, and it's a program called OpenTunes. Now, this here you can see in front of you, this is OpenTunes. We're going to walk through the very basics of using this application in action, but this is basically an open source 2D animation software. And in terms of who uses this, the most famous would be Studio Ghibli, the people behind Princess Mononoke, uh, Spirited Away, etc. Some of the most popular animes, they used OpenTunes to create them. And this is kind of the closest you've got to what Blender is to 3D, OpenTunes is to open source 2D tools. There is a lot of power in this program. Now we'll get back to some of the details about OpenTunes in a little bit. It is available for Windows and Mac from the website, which by the way is opentunes.github.io, tunes with a Z. Uh, there is also a Linux version available. We'll get back to that and, and look over some of these details in a little bit, but first let's do some hands-on. This is a project you could download, uh, kind of showcases what you can do in OpenTunes. We're also going to create our own masterpiece, Space Marine on a Beach with a Beach Ball, in just a few minutes. But here you can see the kind of animations that you can make. Now, this is organized into a number of different levels. Uh, the terminology you'll find when working with OpenTunes is a little bit strange. It comes from, I think, more of a traditional 2D animation perspective. So as a learning curve, you're going to find things a little bit confusing over time. But you guys, this tool here for uh, basically comp compositing and drawing your scenes. We'll look at some of the drawing tools in a second when we start from the very beginning. And then you've got other different views here. So you've got the ability to set fixed palettes um, that you've got. So I'll go back over here. We'll pick our character. So over here, we'll pick our character as our animated guy right here. So we got this guy right here. Uh, we can go ahead, you see here, we've got uh, palettes applied to the particular character. So you can work with a fixed color set palette. You've got fine tune control over all of those things in the palette. The cool thing here is if you change something in a palette, so for example, his clothing, I can go ahead here and change them to red in this case, and then clothing dark, I could change to, uh, I don't know, a different color of red, and that will apply across the entire scene. So we go back here, you're now gonna notice all of your scenes across all of your frames now have that update. So it makes making changes across your entire scene very uh, easy. Uh, and it also, this is uh, very shareable, so you can reuse all these different assets and such, like so you could have your color palettes, you can save them globally, use them between projects, and so on. And then we get into some really complicated stuff. So you can do uh, special effects, and so here you can see uh, a matting special effect being used here. You can see here something just doing uh, brightness control on the scene. So here I'll go to the rendered view, and now what we can do is do things like change the brightness, like so or we can change the contrast, like so. And you've got a ton of these special effects. Again, we'll get back to that when we do the demonstration in just a second. Plus you've got a uh, function for managing things over time, basically for changing data um, over time. Your timeline here is vertical. Uh, it changes between vertical and horizontal between drawing modes. It is, again, sometimes a little bit less intuitive than you would imagine. But I think the easiest way to probably showcase OpenTunes is to start from scratch. So what we're gonna do is create a new scene here uh, so discard the changes, create it anyways. All right, so here we've got our scene. You can also bring in um, traditional assets. I think I've got some ready to go. So over here, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna drop in this background scene. Uh, you can either import it or load it. That way, if you make changes to the original, they'll convert over or not. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and do an import because we're not gonna be changing it. I've already imported it once, so it's asking me to overwrite it. All right, so here we are in our scene. I'm gonna go up here and use this tool right here, which is like the positioning tool, and we'll switch to scale mode. And I'm just gonna scale this so it fits entirely like so. All right, so there in our timeline, we have um, a scene to work with. Now, as I mentioned, timeline. We're gonna make this say 30 frames. So I'm gonna pick the 30th frame, and I'm going to set the stop marker there. So our animation goes from here to here. And now we've got our background, and I want this background layer to last across all of those frames. So I'm just gonna drag this across right there. So now we have this sunny beach there for all of our scenes. Now what we're gonna do is bring in a Space Marine animation. Now this is an animated GIF I downloaded off the web. It's not my work, uh, but it does look good. So I'm gonna come over here, grab all the individual frames, but you don't actually have to, because I've got them named in the way that uh, uh, OpenTunes wants. So instead I can just grab in the one frame like so, and we will import it, we'll overwrite and apply. All right, so there is our Space Marine on a beach. And we're in scale mode too. I don't want that, I wanna be in position mode. 
All right, there we go. So we got our Space Marine. All the various different frames are available here. You can reuse the frames in the scene basically by dragging them in. You're going to notice each one was actually quite short in duration. So what we want to do is basically just grab each frame and make it, I don't know, three apiece. So each frame is going to last for three frames. Oops, come on. Over here. All right, there we go. And over, so if you're using, if you're creating your art in, um, say, Krita or uh, Photoshop or 3D renders from Blender, as you can see, you can obviously import it in here. You can actually even bring in, uh, so the last frame, we're going to hold it for a while. All right, there we go. So now we have our cool animation going on here. Let's go ahead and play it. All right, like so. Our playback speed is pretty high, so let's, let's drop that about in half. And play it. All right, so we got an idle animation. We can loop it right here. So there is our Space Marine on a beach. He's a happy fellow. We're good to go there. So what else can we do here? Well, we can get into uh, traditional drawing. We can also do some kind of cool animation. So if we wanted to, we can just do traditional keyframed animation here. So for example, I can go back to frame number one here, uh, and we could grab this guy using the move tool right here. And then we go to frame number five, move him over a little bit, frame number nine, move him over a little bit, frame number 13, move him over a bit, and you'll see how this goes. And we'll just go over here, and then we'll go to the very end where he's exiting stage left. All right, there we go. So now we've got uh, kind of a neat animation of him moving, so let's go ahead and see that. All right, there we go. So we've got uh, pretty easy to do traditional keyframe movements. Uh, you can see the keys that are generated as we moved across. And another neat thing that you could do is as you are moving across, we can actually see the keyframes. So there you can see the keyframes between animation for frame one and frame five. So here I'm going to jump here. We can go back the other direction as well, and we can um, onion skin that way. So I can grab one. So there we can see the previous frame. And we can actually do a couple. So we can actually have a nice sequence of animation. We can see what we've done, and we can actually go in either direction. So we can go and see what our frames are going to do in the other direction as well. Very useful if you're going from frame to frame to frame in your animation. All right, <clears throat> so that's the basics of bringing in traditional animation. On top of that, OpenTunes also is a drawing application. So you're competing with the likes of uh, Toon Boom and Adobe Animate for the most part. And Animate is kind of the successor to Flash. So when we're drawing here, we can do this by creating a new uh, layer. So we can do, a, sorry, a level. Again, they have their own terminology for everything. We've got three options here. I'm only really gonna cover two. So you've got their tunes raster level, a normal raster level, and a vector level. Raster level is basically you are working with pixels, uh, whereas vectors, you are dealing with math. The nice thing about vector graphics, like think about SVGs, like Adobe Illustrator, that kind of thing, is as you scale them, they stay resolution independent. So the more you zoom in, it's math. It's not individual pixels, so you don't have any degradation of quality. So you can scale things up or down however as much as you want, and we'll start with that style. All right, so we're going to do a single frame. All right, there we go. So we now have this new track right here. I'm going to go ahead and call this Beach Ball. All right, so there is our Beach Ball in the scene. Uh, to get going with it, oh, it created a, sorry, I was at frame uh, 29 when I created it. By the way, you can grab things by their handle at the top here. Like, Eek. Come on. You can grab them at the top and drag them that way. So back to frame one here, we now can basically start creating our beach ball. Creating tools, uh, you've got a number of controls over here. We're just going to show you the very basics. I could do it simply this way and use uh, straight out shapes, which would make a whole lot of sense. But instead, I'm going to show you drawing with a brush. Uh, you can draw over the brush up here. You've got your, your paint control. So this is the width of your brush. Uh, accuracy, you can think of kind of like how much assistance it will give you to smooth out your brush stroke. So if you're very jittery, uh, you're going to want to set the accuracy, I believe, to quite low. And the more so uh, you increase this, the more uh, it will assist your work. So if you have twitchy hands like me, you're going to probably want a lowish accuracy. And smoothness actually is sort of like the lag behind where you draw. Uh, you're going to want to play with these two uh, to get a result you like. I'm going to turn smoothness down slightly. Uh, and this is where I like it to be. By the, by the way, if you've got a stylus hooked up, this works with uh, typical drawing tablets. And now we can just go ahead and draw like so. So you see how I'm lagging behind the actual cursor? That is being controlled uh, by the smoothing value. So we've got a closed line here. Uh, we can now go ahead and do color fill. By the way, you can fill multiple ways. So you can actually fill um, 
inside of things like shapes or you can actually fill the lines or you can fill everything if you wish um, and you've got control over how to fill you can select based off of like freehand selection or basically what you just created so we got that now we can go ahead and create and fill this thing with a color colors work off of palette so you see over here we have black defined so far so we can add a new color to our palette uh, and we can just go ahead and change it so let's make this a red beach ball color control over here uh, I got it on auto mode so it automatically create a new color for me uh, by the way you can name these colors so if I wanted to I could call this beach ball and then if I change beach ball in the scene uh, it will update all frames with that color from that color palette which is definitely useful so go ahead uh, we can draw our single color over here now you're going to notice this seems kind of like layers it's kind of reusable as sprites in the scene uh, they call them levels you can reuse these across different um, shapes and so on so you saw even when we were dealing with this guy each individual frame came in as a level it's kind of confusing to get used to at first but uh, that is what is being created over here so here is our beach ball at zeroth frame and now what we're going to do is basically jump forward a little bit in the timeline like so and you can hit D and it'll start drawing a new frame or you could quite literally just um, start drawing now here you can see uh, our because we have it set to do multiple um, onion skins here we can, by, we can get rid of them so if we don't need that level of detail we can add one back in get rid of that one right there all right so there you see since frame one to now uh, we have this onion skinning going on so now what we're gonna do is basically just draw another frame down say here like so now what I'm going to do is undo that and I'm going to do the same thing all right so drawing mode right so now all I need to do is select my palette entry where is my palette uh, line level palettes all right I screw oh paint all right hmm not sure how to select it until I start painting so hopefully I can change it after the fact all right that was not ideal but um all right so let's let's undo that we should now have it selected so there's some just usability issues going on all right so I'm drawing very very poorly uh as you can see there is our next frame and we can go to the next frame right here and then we could go ahead and draw here's our squished ball like so and then you just basically continue the process up so this is kind of handy because we're going to go up to about to where we started from before like so and then we're going to go to this frame right here and we're going to be up I don't know here and then we're going to go to this frame so there's a weird lag out from when I start drawing so I actually have to start drawing for it to update I don't know why it's doing that but uh, that is the case so here we've done it and by the way we can go back in uh, select our red go to each one fill them in fill them in fill them in fill it in and fill it in all right so there we go we should have a nice weird beach ball bouncing animation all right so let's now that it's figured it out boom 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 and up it goes all right so that is kind of the basics of drawing on a frame by frame basis now we can do a whole lot more I'm not going to get into uh really the details of that because it's beyond me for the most part but you're going to see here I'm uh, going come into the um, FX schematic mode here and here you got a lot of stuff going on so we got the beach ball here we have our background image going there it's all being mixed into there and here is our ultimate output now we can do some neat stuff here so for example we could take our beach ball and we can add an effect in here such as a blur like that we just connect it in like so and then connect it in like so and now we can double tap this guy and you can set the amount of the blur here by the way I believe this means that you can keyframe that value over time so if you want to change the blur value you can change it as you go and you'll notice okay nothing happened so as I go across the frames we're not seeing any blurring nothing like that so how do I get around that well what you need to do is actually preview your scene right here and now you see your blur in and you're also going to notice it's a little slow and that's because it's I don't know it's it's rendering it's doing its math thing but for a special effect you can right click and you can cache the effect and generally that makes your performance much better so there you go our masterpiece space marine on a beach with a beach ball that looks like a blob from hell and that's it that that is kind of the very basics of open tune then you ultimately you will render it out uh, you can render it out as a video you can render it out as individual frames you've got all kinds of control that way You're, there's a ton of functionality I'm not even getting close to covering uh, there's a ton of functionality for importing inking from external 
We have all these various different tools down here. We've got things like cutout animation tools and so on, way beyond the scope of what I'm going to cover in this video. I just wanted to show you the very basics of creating animations using OpenTunes. So if you saw it, you at least know how to get started because again, it isn't immediately intuitive unless I think you come from a traditional animation background in which case you will probably like it more. So a bit more about it. If you want to check it out, uh, it's available at opentunes with a Z at github.io. Um, it started life as a program called Tunes. Tunes is still developed, by the way, if you're interested. You can use this uh, free of charge, both commercially and non-commercially. It is open source, so you can modify it that way. It was used at Studio Ghibli. I think it still is um, to do uh, the, well, you can see the details of it right there. Uh, there are effects available. Again, we only saw the very basics of effects, but we come on back here. I will show you uh, just the extent of your options here. You have a ton of effects. So you can add uh, shaders in here. We've got uh, particle systems you can create. You've got lighting setups. Uh, you can do just straight out image adjustments. So if you just wanted to do something like uh, brightness and contrast control, we could drop that in there and kind of put it in line like so and feed the output like that. And then you can control those values right here. So uh, you have this full effects stack there with a ton of effects to work with. Again, some of it can be a little bit confusing. There's no question about that. Uh, but uh, it, it's a very powerful tool with tons of capabilities. There is another tool out there, uh, GTS, which is a scanning tool developed by Studio Ghibli. This is a separate thing, but it is available for download right here. Now, what you will find kind of interesting is you go to the downloads, you're only going to get options for Windows and Mac OS. Now, if you're a Linux user, you're thinking, hey, you said Linux. Don't worry. There is at least a flat pack version of it available for download. So there is a Linux version out there. I don't know why it's not officially supported. I, I don't, I have no idea, to be honest, but it is out there. So don't worry about that. It is also an open source project. It uses the Qt, um, C++ language to create things. Uh, in terms of the licensing available, it is, it's a mixed license too, for be sure. Oh, it's BSD3. So it's a pretty straightforward license to work with. And then also, if you're interested in the commercial version, there is Tunes uh, still being developed. I do not know the difference and that's beyond the scope of what I wanna cover in this video too. But if for some reason you need a professional version or professional support, whatever, Digital Video is continuing to make a commercial version of it. There is a 15 day trial of that available as well. Uh, not really the topic of this video today. We are talking very specifically about OpenTunes and just OpenTunes, a super powerful open source animation tool, very much used in production in one of the most demanding pipelines in the world. So if it works for them, in theory, it should work for you. And it's actually been used to create a couple of video games as well. Um, so yeah, definitely an interesting project. Have you used OpenTunes? And if so, what do you think of it? If not, what are you using in its place? There's other options out there. So again, uh, this is a direct competitor with Adobe Animate, but it also competes with the likes of uh, Toon Boom. Uh, there's also increasingly Krita has animation support. Blender is getting more and more animation support every year. Uh, but in terms of free and open source traditional 2D animation tools, I think OpenTunes is uh, the best of the best. But let me know what you think. If there is an alternative out there, let me know that as well. And I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.